Wednesday night, around 50 people from this congregation showed up for the Ash Wednesday service. This service marks the beginning of the Christian season of Lent. Lent, 40 days, well, it's actually 46 because we don't count the, the Sundays in there. So we have 46 days to prepare. To prepare for what? What are we preparing for? When I was a child, preparing for Easter meant I got a new beautiful dress and a beautiful hat. The only time I got a new hat. But now I have discovered that preparation for Easter can be a deeply spiritual journey that I take with others in community and by myself. On Ash Wednesday, Christians are invited to enter a period of self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, and self-denial. It's a time when we remember our hurtful actions and all the ways that we separate ourselves from each other and from God. And we seek forgiveness. Kind of sounds like a downer, doesn't it? But for me, for me, I have found it to be a time when I focus on Jesus' life, Jesus' death and resurrection, and what that really means for me. I see it not as a beat-me-up time, but a time for renewal, new beginnings, and a time to draw closer to God. For me, this is a time that I can stop beating myself up because I didn't do this or I didn't do that. I reflect and review those missteps, those people I have hurt or those promises I didn't keep. And I have an open conversation with God, seeking guidance and inspiration. I either change, I ask for forgiveness, and most importantly, I try to grow, draw closer to God. This is the season when I am reminded of all those times I tried to do it by myself and I didn't ask Jesus for help. <clears throat> those times when I thought I knew better. In our scripture reading today, the psalmist gives us the before and the after picture of an experience of confessing our sins to God. It describes for us the journey that could be ours in these 40 days, a journey on which we reflect and review our lives, our relationship with God and with others and with our community. A journey that acknowledges our shortcomings, our separateness from God, and takes us on an unparalleled experience of God's abundant grace. Easter will have a whole new meaning to you if you take this journey, the journey described in Psalm 32. C.S. Lewis once said, a man who admits no guilt can accept no forgiveness. In other words, while God forgives us, and that forgiveness is not contingent on our confession, our experience of God's forgiveness is. It's not to say that the process of coming to terms with the way that we have not loved God with our whole heart or not loved our neighbors as ourselves is an easy journey. That's why we do it together as a community of faith in worship, in study, in fellowship. Yes, 
Much of the work is done by ourselves, but we are not alone. Have you ever wondered why the church offers an Ash Wednesday service, a Lenten study of some kind, a Lenten devotional, a Monday Thursday service, a Good Friday service, an Easter vigil, an Easter sunrise service, and an Easter service. These are all opportunities for each of us to join the journey, a spiritual journey that is celebrated in the worship on Easter morning. The significance of the journey and the opportunities for transformation are marked by all these special services and opportunities of the season of Lent. And it's a lot of opportunities. I invite each one of us to walk this journey of reflection, renewal, and transformation. Now I can almost hear you all thinking, what does she want us to do? I can't tell you what to do. Because for each of us, the journey is a little different. I can share with you what I'm going to do, but it's not the same thing that I did last year, and it's not what I'll probably do next year. So in case you haven't noticed, I have a tendency to be a person of action. So my journey will look very different from those of you who are fed by solitude and contemplation. Photography doesn't work for me. But for those of you who saw Warren's show of his photography at the mill last month, you'll know that photography works for him. Maybe that's your journey this year, to simply discover what it is that draws you closer to God. Some may find God by reading the Lenten devotion prepared by members of this very congregation. Others may find God in a walk in the woods, and still others may find God reading a book. It's an intentional seeking of God. For me, I've discovered that I have come to think of Lent as a time of renewal and recommitment of my love of Christ. It has become a time when I consciously, consciously try to make changes in my life that draw me closer to God and to creation. One thing that I'm going to do this season is I have signed up to receive daily emails about our creation. Emails that help me to reduce my carbon production. Each day I get a little email and it says, it gives me a little way, one way that day that I can reduce my carbon, um, act, reduce my carbon output. One day it was, just let go, undo one light bulb. Another day it was unplug all those little things that you don't use every day, like your every minute, by, like your charger for your telephone. I've put information in the bulletin if you're interested in signing up for it. Lent is a time for moving from darkness into light. The light and joy of experiencing God's abundant grace, it can be yours. Each of us can take this journey and experience the joy of life and love that Jesus offers. It's ours if we want it. And I invite each of you to join the millions of people around the world taking this same journey with us during the season of Lent. Seek God. Seek God during the season of Lent. Amen.